How many of you have ever been to a TEDx event before? Did you ever feel the desire in your heart to be on the other side of the stage? To speak and be heard? I know I have. The first time that I attended a TEDx event was in 2018 and I immediately felt that I wanted to be on the stage and talk about something that I was very passionate about. Over the last three years, I have found an interesting idea or rather the idea has found me. It is about how I have ended up giving a TEDx talk or for that matter, how has anyone that has ever given a TED talk ended up on the stage? Their stories are filled with rejections, failures and most importantly, crossroads. There is nothing that you can do about crossroads. They are inherent and they are constant in life. The way that you handle crossroads is what makes all the difference. I have learned that there's three parts to leveraging crossroads for your own benefits. Those are divergence, convergence and emergence. It is difficult to grasp any concept until you weave a story about it. So here is a story about how I've got to where I'm standing today, leveraging the three step strategy. So this is a long story. There are no dragons or no knights in shining armor. Although I was tempted to include them, the curator said that the story will not be realistic enough. Anyway, this is how I've ended up right here. Since I can remember, I've always been curious and hyperactive. My parents homeschooled me from the ages two to four. My favorite thing as a child was to read encyclopedias. I also spent a lot of time watching Nat Geo and Discovery. It was during this period that I developed my interest in physics. I think physics is the best framework to think about solutions to problems. It boils things down to their fundamental truths and pushes one to reason up from there, as opposed to reasoning by any analogy. Physics has certainly enabled me to gain a better understanding of different problems and to help others become better equipped to solve them. And that is something that I've always valued my entire life. In 2014-15, a YouTube craze swept India. And I was one of those teens who was hit very, very hard by it. Storytelling is something that I really enjoy. And this seemed like a very interesting way to reach out to a wider audience. Now, all I needed was a camera, a video editor and an internet connection. On the other hand, just like every other student, I had to study every evening, be a good student, complete all of my notebooks, <clears throat> pass all of my exams. But school seemed very predictable and boring to me. The system did not pique my interests in the way that reading encyclopedias or watching YouTube did. So I was in a dilemma. Do I make videos or should I focus on my academics? Here comes the first part of my process. Divergence. In order to understand and enjoy my interests, I diverged into learning all the particular skills that I needed to do so. I took up public speaking, started writing sketches, editing them and putting them on the YouTube. I also read up a lot on technology and philosophy. One to find answers to where we are headed as a society and the other to understand the roots of where we have come from. Basically, I had a lot of interests. But was I reading my textbooks? Only on the fifth Saturday of every month, which uh, happens only a few times every year. School didn't seem hard to be honest. Well, sort of. Indulging in extracurricular activities was not a problem as long as my, I passed my exams, right? But what if I started failing? As the 10th board exams approached in the summer of 2017, difficulties ensued. It struck me that sitting and studying was the most difficult thing to do. As a matter of desperation, I began wrapping rubber bands around my wrist and snapping them whenever I found myself losing focus. During the last few days before exams, I tried tying my foot to the table so I wouldn't go out in the hall and watch television. It was that bad. I had no idea why I couldn't focus. Initially, I really thought school was boring. But then how could the others study for extended periods of time with relative ease? Where on the other hand, pun intended, I sat here frustrated with a rubber band around my wrist. 
was it a bad idea to diverge and work on various things at 15 it really seemed so despite failing algebra and sanskrit in midterms i managed to score well in my 10th grade exams right before i turned 18 i was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder having adhd means my mind is like a web browser wherein 20 tabs are open seven are frozen and i don't know where the music is coming from but this also means that i am curious about nearly everything under the sun and i will go to great lengths to pursue these interests that's about right then it really sounded like me it was at this time that the multiple interests and the short attention span started making sense as a result i started taking medications for my condition and would you believe it i didn't perform poorly in studies without my adhd my all india rank in the nest exam was 430 12 board exams were uh, kind of better to what happened in 2017 and i managed to score enough to get into st xavier's college mumbai yet this is not the end of my academic extra curricular crossroad moreover i now had to adapt to attending classes with some of the smartest students in the country coming from a tier 2 city where i was used to standing out among the crowd due to my extra curricular interests this new environment seemed very intimidating i found myself at my first crossroads at my first social crossroads i did not know how to fit into this new setting and be socially acceptable in this precious student community was an identity shift inevitable was a new crossroad inevitable a new crossroad means divergence however this is where things get complicated if you are not careful enough diverging could backfire on you i learned this the hard way i found that extra curricular activities are the best way to make friends at xavier's and also feel less intimidated by them but i couldn't do that while taking my medications because i thought that it has a numbing effect on my creativity i felt like in that moment i needed my hyperactive self in order to make friends as a result i stopped taking my medications and i started feeling like myself again so i joined every club i could and was even a founding member of one of the clubs however all of this socializing took a toll on my academic performance i failed both of my math papers in the first semester and i felt devastated i had deviated beyond my control and paid the price by failing in the area that i did not pay attention to at that point i quit extracurriculars during the next semesters i got back on my medications stopped participating in all the clubs and focused on just passing my exams you know being a good student studying every day scoring good marks that kind of stuff but to be totally honest going back to medications was subduing my adhd and it just meant living an unsatisfied life i wasn't myself without my adhd no more curiosity no more creativity no more telling jokes no more telling stories mentally i was in a very very dark place over the course of 2 months i lost 16 kgs and i quit working on anything besides my academics understanding your potential but being constrained by how you are wired is an extremely disheartening experience it was clear that i could not function in this manner for long things had to be changed before more permanent damage could be done in 2020 the covid-19 pandemic struck and that is when things turned around for me having read about epidemiology in my encyclopedia before my feeling was that this pandemic was going to take a very long time to end on my way home i decided that now i must start putting all of my knowledge i had acquired up to this point and connect the dots to solve some real world problems having diverged enough for almost 18 years of my life it was now time for convergence as soon as i got back home i stopped taking my medications because i did not need them the colleges were shut i did not have to pay attention into my classes anymore and the colleges were not going to start until the entire system could be taken online but this might take a very very long time then an epiphany hit me this was the first problem that i could solve 
helping institutions transition to the online mode. I reached out to a digital consultancy firm and pitched them the idea of creating a robust, inexpensive and easy to use LMS for tier 2 and tier 3 colleges. We delivered a great LMS that met their needs. This was my first experience as a product manager. And I quickly understood how converging my existing skills helped me pitch, develop and manage the product. It is ironic that I helped build an LMS system even though I was studying with academics myself. I also began working for a startup focused on EV infrastructure as a product management intern to understand the up and coming trends in the space better. It seemed like this connecting the dots idea was really working. Suddenly, leveraging technology to solve real world problems helped me feel like myself again. At this time, I also started working on something that I'm very, very proud of. The paradigm. Here is where I built upon everything that I had learned. Since the elections of 2019, I had been extremely curious about the entire Indian political scenario. Unfortunately, the information I found on the subject was jargon field and not at all suited to today's youth. The Paradigm is a social change company we founded back in 2019 to help educate people about socio-political affairs. In the April of 2020, we launched the Paradigm's Changemakers program and so far, 200 plus people from three countries have taken part in that. We have empowered our changemakers to make their voices heard about various issues pressing the society. Several of our changemakers have founded their own organizations like the Hummingbird in Bangalore that works to address mental health issues among students. We have had some very, very prominent individuals guide our changemakers, including Nobel Peace Prize nominee, Dr. Lenin Raghuvanshi, political consultant, Dr. Anurag Singh, and the likes of others. By picking up things along the way and then connecting them when I was ready, I emerged wiser from various crossroads. However, it has been extremely, extremely challenging. It is impossible not to break down sometimes and even wonder if you are doing it right. Just a couple of months ago, I was prepared to give everything up due to all the stress that was piling up on me. This had been the biggest crossroads I had faced. How do you emerge victorious out of a situation that quite literally sucks the life out of you? You seek help. As I was ready to give up on all of what I had done so far, the people around me helped me realize that it was just another problem that I had to solve, like I always do. They reminded me that a Ruthik on a linear path is not a Ruthik at all. Those people reminded me that I do my best at staying at the crossroads. You see, life and society as we know it is not very linear. Some of the most beautiful things in the world have sprung from crossroads of these various aspects. People finding themselves at the crossroads of these different aspects of life have created things that cement the legacy of our entire civilization. At the crossroads, you are able to identify, acknowledge and solve problems better than anyone else on a linear path. Dwelling on the crossroads, to put it bluntly, is extremely uncomfortable. But the best part about all the discomfort is that it propels growth and innovation. Have I gained anything from dwelling on the crossroads? You tell me. Over the past three years, I have worked as a copywriter, a product manager, an entrepreneur and various other roles. Trying to create and conquer opportunities in various different domains has left me with an inbox that is full of rejections. My experiences have only made me stronger and helped me appreciate that this world is not just all rainbows and sunshine. Presently, I am building an internet company, working part-time in one of India's fastest growing startups and maintaining an 8 plus GPA along with managing my academics. Even though managing a 70 to 80 hour work week is stressful, I cannot have it any other way. I've been lucky enough to find relative comfort at the intersection of science, technology, arts and humanities, the four most important pillars of our civilization. Steve Jobs' love for technology and his affinity towards art, 
led into the elegance of Apple products that we even still see today, a decade after his death. The calligraphy classes he took in college helped him create the beautiful fonts for Macintosh in the 1980s. The incredible things born out of crossroads outlive ordinary and ephemeral creatures like you and me. Steve once said that uh, you cannot connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So you will have to trust in some process that the dots will somehow connect in the future. If Leonardo hadn't gone out of his way to learn anatomy, engineering, art, sculpting and more, the Renaissance might have turned into the Dark Ages too. In fact, if Leo hadn't gone out of his way, I wouldn't be giving this talk at all. He taught me how incredibly valuable it is to be a multi-potentialite. All my life has been dedicated to the pursuit of becoming a Renaissance man. It is a lifelong pursuit which has no clear indication of when it will be fulfilled. On the other hand, that also means that there is room for infinite growth and progress. I learned from the pe people living on the crossroads that although I sometimes get into trouble due to my ADHD, it is a superpower that is unique to me. From enjoying various things in different domains as a child, then completely giving all of it up, and then Back to accepting my own self, my story has been a story of embracing crossroads. Like I said, crossroads are an inherent part of life. Not all crossroads are bad, and to be honest, some need to be created. You cannot point at a single instance in your life and say that this was the last dilemma that I ever face. Neither can I. So what will I do the next time that I am at a crossroads? I plan to diverge, converge and emerge victorious on the other end. And I look forward to seeing you there too. Thank you.